Good morning, everybody. Thank you. Welcome to our worship today. And I just wanted to quieten down as we come to our worship. And listen to these words. They are a call to us to come to worship, inspired by John 4. Come, all who are thirsty, says Jesus our Lord. Come, all who are weak, taste the living water that Jesus gives. Dip your hands into the stream. Refresh body and soul. Drink from it. Depend on it. For this water will never run dry. Come, all who are thirsty, says Jesus our Lord. Amen. I don't mean prayer. Lord Jesus, help us today to know that the time is already here. When true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, pour your Holy Spirit on us afresh and give us integrity and focus as we worship you today. In Jesus' name, amen. And now we're going to sing our first song. It might be a new song to, uh, to many of us. It's called, Come See This Glorious Light. Please stand as we sing.
please sit down. We come to the time of the service where we come to say sorry to God, to confess the things that we've done wrong, to confess the things that we should have done, that we failed to do, and to come to his love. Like all living creatures, we need water to survive. And in a spiritual sense, Jesus is our living water. It's our sins, our rebellion, our brokenness from the world that dries out. Let us bring to mind all the parched areas in our lives and then confess them to God. And now let's say these words together. God of living water, we confess the dryness of our lives, the brittle words we have thought and spoken, the relationships that are crumbling, the arid way of looking at things that centers on self, the cracked and jagged edges of our world. We are truly sorry. Hear our confession, O Jesus Christ, and rain down your mercy upon us. Amen. And inspired by Romans 5, we have these words of reassurance. Because of God's great love for us, we have peace with God and access to God's grace all through Jesus Christ, who while we were still sinners, died to free us from the bondage of sin. Therefore, we ask Jesus to give us the living water that quenches the dryness of our souls. In this, we know that we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. And the special prayer for today, collect for the 13th Sunday after Trinity. Almighty God, who called your church to bear witness that you were in Christ, reconciling the world to yourself, help us to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may be drawn to you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And now, Matt is going to lead us in Mission Possible. With Helen's help, and yours, of course. A two-parter over on this side, joining with Helen. The words should be on the screen, if that's possible. They're going to sing Jesus, Healer, Teacher, Saviour, and repeat it a few times. And then my group over here come in with the next pitch, which goes, well, it goes, Jesus, Healer, Teacher, Saviour. Oh, oh. oh, I didn't know we got music as well, right, okay. Jesus, healer, teacher, saviour. Jesus, healer, teacher, saviour. Jesus, healer, teacher, saviour. Over here. Jesus, healer, teacher, saviour. Son of God. Lord of Lords. King of Kings. Praise Him. Try it again. Son of God, Lord of Lords, King of Kings, praise Him. One last time. <laughs> Son of God, Lord of Lords, King of Kings, praise Him. <sighs> the idea is that there's a proclamation of some great things about Jesus, but also some fun and silliness about that. And if that song stays with you all day, well then, praise him. <laughs> Alleluia. Amen. Uh, let's continue now, though, singing our praises to uh, that amazing God that we, um, yeah, we worship.
is good news of whom we can proclaim. So we're going to sing, Jesus is greater than the greatest hero. This is about our wonderful God again. Let's stand up and sing together.
gonna see, we're gonna see Jesus lifted high. We're gonna see, we're gonna see, we're gonna see Jesus lifted high. We're gonna see, we're gonna see, we're gonna see Jesus lifted high. We're gonna see, we're gonna see, we're gonna see Jesus that we will see you lifted high above the whole of this world. Amen. Today's reading is from John, chapter 4, starting at verse 3. Jesus left Judea and started back to Galilee, but he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, Ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria. Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, so that I may never be thirsty, or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, uh, Go call your husband and come back. I have no husband. You are right in saying, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither in this mountain or on Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming, and is now here, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. I am he who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman. But no one said, what do you want or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He can't be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me 
and to complete his work. Do not say, four months more, then comes the harvest. But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is ready, receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I said you to reap that for which you did not labour. Others have laboured and you have entered into their labour. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there for two days, and many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Saviour of the world. This is the word of the Lord. Well, a big thank you to those people who uh, filmed themselves. Uh, it must have been a bit odd when you were just doing your lines and not the other bits, particularly for poor Susan, who was reading out, he said, she said, he said, she said, uh, quite a few times. Uh, I did end up cutting some of those out because it became obvious who was saying what. But great. Thank you ever so much for that. Mission possible. This is the theme that we've been looking at over the last uh, four Sundays, just thinking how possible mission is. It's possible because it's God's mission. He's already gone ahead of us. He's prepared the way and he's brought us into contact with lots of people. And we're going to think today about how we can take those contacts and move on from there. But let's begin with a prayer. Lord, we thank you for that Bible reading that we have just heard so beautifully read to us that just reminds us of you being living water. Indeed, where we are dry, come and refresh us. Pour your love on us. And as we hear your word, may it lift us in praise of you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm sure all of us have had the experience of going on a walk somewhere where we come to a river and need to cross it. If we have an OS map, we might look for a bridge. If we don't, we will just be looking along that river, perhaps for a, a thinner part, a shallower part where we might cross. And of course, what joy we will have when we come Two, some stepping stones. Stepping stones are put there. And I've got a picture of some stepping stones now. This thing's not working for some reason. Have I really failed to turn it on? No, it says on, right. Oh, right, there we are. Got it. Picture of stepping stones. The joy of seeing those so that you can actually get across the river without getting your feet wet. What a wonderful thing they are. But the thing is about them is somebody has put them there. Somebody has gone before you and quite intentionally placed large, flat stones, hopefully that don't wobble too much. There are some on a, uh, stepping stones going around the top uh, of the uh, three lakes at Do uh, Dovestones Reservoir but certainly one or two wobble like mad when you stand on them. But uh, hopefully they don't wobble. Hopefully they're good and secure. But somebody has come and put them in place. And once you've crossed, you're further on on your journey and you'll want to know where you're going. And it's always useful to have markers and things that point out the next steps on the way. We're going to be looking in a few moments at a video uh, that's been produced by Manchester Diocese on a course called Stepping Stones. It is the final two 
that I have taken 25 minutes worth of video and made into seven. So um, that's what you're going to get. If you want to see the whole thing, we did send out an email telling people where to look for that um, and on YouTube. Or you can just go to YouTube and put in Stepping Stones Manchester Diocese and it should take you to all the videos. But before we do that, I wanted to think about that passage that we've just had. Because in it, Jesus is putting stepping stones down for the Samaritan woman. There were two day, ways of going to uh, Galilee from Jerusalem. The shortest route went through Samaria. The longest route went along the River Jordan. A lot of people from Galilee preferred to do the longer route because it was more significant for pilgrimage, but also it meant not having to go through that land of what they saw as an illegitimate nation. The Samaritans, they didn't think, were true Jews. They didn't associate with them. But for whatever reason, Jesus chose to take his disciples on the shorter route back to Galilee. And as they were traveling around the middle of the day, they came to the place where Jacob's well was. And leaving Jesus behind, the disciples went into town to get some food. Now, if you've ever done hard work in the tropics or in warmer parts of the world, you will certainly be aware that you try and avoid the middle of the day. The women of the village would have gone out when it was cooler, earlier in the day to collect water, or at evening. But one woman had to come alone because she was an outcast. So she came at noon, in the middle of the day, all alone, not socialising with anyone. And to her surprise, she found a Jewish man sitting by the well. What do you do? If you were British, you'd sit there in uncomfortable silence. But Jesus put a stepping stone down. He opens conversation. He chose to speak to her. And he had an ordinary word to say to her, quite an obvious word. Woman, would you give me some water? She's surprised because Jews don't talk to Samaritans and she says so. He then places another stepping stone for that could have been the end of it. He takes the conversation on. He offers her living water, which must have left her a bit perplexed because as she rightly points out, you haven't got a bucket, mate. How are you going to give me any water? But then he goes deeper. He moves the conversation even further on. And he starts to talk about himself as the living water. An everlasting alternative to what she is seeking. And then places another stepping stone. A challenge for her. First, go and call your husband. Now, in this, we know that he has a deep spiritual insight. How was he to know that she didn't have a husband at this time? How was he to know that she'd in fact had five husbands? He'd never met the woman. Well, God knows everything. And he had that spiritual insight given to him. We call it a word of knowledge, a word that goes beyond our ability to know. Jesus had it at this point. Now, logically, he could have determined that, yes, she was coming in the middle of the day alone, so she must be a social outcast. It could have been a good guess. But the five husbands? That was far too much knowledge for it to be just a good guess. Jesus is given this knowledge, and he uses it to challenge her to get her to think about her life. These can be given to us sometimes when we're talking to people. 
things that we've never thought about, strange things. Hopefully they're not uncomfortable things of challenge like this. And in this particular case, it was right for Jesus to challenge her. But it may not be right for us when we're talking to people to be challenging them about their way of life. We need great spiritual discernment as we do that, if, or if we are to do that. And then they have a conversation. I love this. Perhaps because she's feeling a bit uncomfortable, she wants to distract Jesus. So she then decides to debate theology with the Son of God. Not a wise move. Not a wise move at all. And they start talking about the differences between Jews and Samaritans and where they worship. And Jesus just says to her, look, the time is coming. In fact, the time's here when true worshippers will worship God in spirit and truth. It won't be about a place, a temple, a mountain. It'll be about knowing God and being in that relationship with him. That is the way. And I just love that, you know, he doesn't say, whoa, whoa, come on, let's go back to talk about your husbands. He doesn't dwell on that. He's all the time putting stepping stones down for her, responding to her. And he puts the next one in place until he puts the final stone there. The stone of revelation, the one that shows without doubt that he is the Messiah, the Christ, the long expected one. So those are the stepping stones that Jesus puts down for the woman. When we find ourselves in situations, we will have opportunities to quite intentionally and deliberately put down stepping stones as a church. We do that too. And then when we have done that, it may be that we then need to put markers or what they call in the video, milestones down. Jesus doesn't make the woman stay with him when the disciples return. He lets her go, perhaps knowing that she needs some space to think and to pray and to go over what's just happened. But actually, she goes and tells others. And getting somebody who's had a fresh experience of Jesus to go and tell others about that is quite a wonderful thing to do. It's great for them. It's great for the listeners. It's great for spreading the good news of Jesus. She shares her encounter, encouraging others to do this is a powerful marker as we think about moving forward. So let's have a look at that video now. To turn contacts into disciples, we need to be intentional. For people to make that journey, we need to put in place stepping stones that they can walk on. Here's an example. You're talking to a young mum at a toddler group that meets in your church hall. You're having a cup of tea and she's telling you about her life. Turns out her mum died a year ago and she's missing her terribly. She's now had her first child and finding it more stressful than she expected. At the same time, she's got questions about the values she's going to bring up a baby with, particularly given the uncertainty of the world today. Lots of hidden leopards there. Ways God's already at work, stirring up questions and longings in her heart. She's open to faith. So the question is, what stepping stones are there in the life of your church that will help her take her next step? What will you recommend to her? Do you have an inquirers group? Or a discussion group in the pub? Or an alpha course? Or a women's wellbeing group? Just one of those could make all the difference. And if you've got a few things to offer, well, that's even better. Stepping stone number one is make the link. In other words, doing something that you're already doing, but joining the dots for people. Make an explicit link to faith issues. That can work particularly well with toddler groups and in our schools. One other thing it's important to say here, 
When we talk about stepping stones, we're not only talking about stepping stones into a church service on a Sunday. It may be that your toddler group develops a weekday toddler church or a messy church. And for those members, that is church. And that's okay. Stepping stone number two is hospitality. We've got all these contacts. Hospitality is an intentional next step in saying, let's get to know each other. It's being proactive and being friendly. Hospitality is whole church events and it's individual. What matters is creating a culture of welcome and personal interest in people. Remember, we talked about people's fear that the church will seem scary or judgmental. Hospitality is a chance to prove we're not. But it doesn't have to be large scale events for groups. It can just be you having a drink with somebody or inviting people for a meal. Something that says we care. Stepping stone number three is a chat group. Nobody likes a hard sell, but people love an informal chance to meet and talk about stuff. Stepping stone number four is an activity group. Some people find chatty groups awkward. Men especially can feel uncomfortable when the main purpose of a group is chatting. My husband would absolutely hate that kind of thing. But here's the thing. It doesn't mean that they don't wrestle with issues. Some people just prefer to talk as they do a shared activity with other people. So there are all sorts of options for activity groups. A walking group, a bike repair group, a book club, an environmental project. Or here's an idea, a men's social. Stepping stone number five is a life help group. It's about helping people with their real world problems. In the communities where we minister, so many people are wrestling with big issues. Some people feel close to the edge. If we can help them navigate life's challenges, we'll earn a right to be heard when we talk about faith. Stepping stone number six is an inquirer's group or basics course. In a way, this is the most obvious stepping stone of all. Here in Manchester, 41% of our churches run an inquirer's or basics course. So that means most of our churches still don't. The Alpha course was set up to be a non-threatening space where people can relax and explore faith. It helps that Alpha has a high profile nationally and the materials are professionally produced. Stepping stone number seven is an offer to pray for people. In a way, this is the easiest stepping stone of the lot, but it's one that makes the link between life and faith brilliantly. And it's an offer of something, a way of saying we care. I our language of a gradual journey can overlook the importance of key moments and milestones. Those moments when you know something's happened, something's changed. And the milestones we're talking about here are moments when people have an opportunity to take a step of faith commitment for the first time. And also moments when they can take steps of deepening faith or applying their faith in a new way. But one Sunday I was invited to be a guest preacher at another church and before the service somebody mentioned there were going to be lots of fringe people and visitors there. Could I invite people to come to faith during my sermon? Well I shuffled nervously because I hate embarrassing people but I did it. During the sermon I said if anybody had been touched by the message and wanted to take a step of faith they could raise a hand. At which point six people raised a hand. Turns out they were looking for faith, but nobody would ever challenged them to take a step of faith. Sometimes we imagine people will be more embarrassed than they actually are. We are often nervous of giving offence. The reality is that lots of people are actively looking for faith, or at least looking for something that gives them and their lives meaning and purpose. But all too often, the reason people don't come to faith is that we don't invite them to come to faith. A local church can be like a would-be fiancé who talks a lot about marriage but never actually pops the question. Different churches will build in milestones in different ways. It's not a one-size-fits-all. Partly it'll depend on their tradition. My first post as a vicar was in a tiny inner-city church in the Catholic tradition. One year we did a traditional Ash Wednesday ashing ceremony. A young woman in her 20s was there who I hadn't seen before. She'd wandered in because she saw the lights on. I invited the congregation to see the moment of the ashing as a moment for taking an intentional step of faith. 
they could view it as a symbolic moment, a sacramental moment, an outward symbol representing an inner spiritual reality. The young woman later told me that that was the moment she came to faith. If I hadn't said anything, it might never have happened. Uh, watched uh, all of those uh, videos that were produced for that uh, stepping stone course and would commend them to you and say they're well worth looking in full if you have some time in the future. But to draw it all to a conclusion, we have some questions to think about for ourselves. The stepping stones are placed intentionally. So, as a church, what stepping stones need to be in place here and now? And if we thought about the stepping stones, then what markers should we be laying out to help people on their journey? And then something that implies applies to us all and is our word in some ways for the year, is where should we be more intentional, more deliberate in what we're saying and talking and inviting when it comes to our faith? The PCC are meeting on the 11th of September in the afternoon to look at a plan for the future. It probably will take us up to 2025 when we have our 150th anniversary. Uh, some of the PCC are looking at each other going, are we? <laughs> yes, you are. It should be in your diaries. <laughs> and uh, a few people will be joining us as well from uh, outside the PCC as well to share some of their thoughts as we look to plan and see what God is saying. We're at a fantastic time in the life of church. Things have been put on hold for over 18 months and we have a new term coming up, a fresh start, a time when we can think about what we do, why we do it and see if we can do it better and be more intentional with it or look to see what new things we could be doing to have a plan that is shared by the whole church looking forward to the next three, four years of how we're going to see growth in this place, growth as individuals and growth in numbers. Mission possible, yes, because it's God's mission and we are a part of it and we have a part to play. So if you have any thoughts of things that you think we should be putting down as stepping stones or markers, then novel a PCC member, email somebody, email me, call me up on the phone, give us ideas. Let us all feed this in to what we're looking at as a church so that when that plan does get published, we all feel we have a part of it because it's what God wants to do in this place, in and through us to make mission possible. Amen. We're going to sing that lovely song that uh, reminds us in some ways of hidden leopards. Even when you don't see it, we know that Jesus is working, that he's here. He's here in our midst, doing great things and then proclaiming who he is as waymaker, miracle, promise keeper, light in the dark.
keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are fierce, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you And let's pray. Jesus, you are Waymaker, the miracle worker. Work in our lives and help us to be intentional in what we do to point you towards others. For we ask this in your precious name. Amen. Jesus, living water, come and refresh us where we are most dry. Pour out your spirit upon us. Reassure us of your presence and of your healing power. And as a church family, we especially lift Gareth Core before you, asking for your healing hand to be upon him. Strengthen his weak heart and his body as he continues to fight COVID and the complications of it. And be with Pam and her family as they care for him and support him. Knowing also just how fragile Pam is. Jesus, the living water, refresh and make whole all those who are suffering in body, mind and spirit. And Jesus, we thank you that your living water wells up to eternal life. That we have this hope that beyond this life, in you there is more, indeed the best to come. Be with those 
who are near death, facing death, or mourning the death of a loved one. Bring them comfort and hope in Jesus' living water. Amen. And Jesus, your living water flows out to the whole world. And when we see such terrible scenes as we've been seeing from Kabul and the fears of those people and the desperation Lord, we pray for those who feel vulnerable and left behind in that country, that ways for them to leave would be opened up. And Lord, that nations who have had the help of Afghans would do all they can to honour all that has been given to them and promises that were made. Well, we know that sadly we're not always able to keep promises because of changing events. But in you, we know that we have the promise keeper, one who when he makes a promise, never, never goes back on it. And in you, all God's promises are yes and amen. So Jesus, be with us as we go our separate ways after this service and help us to live lives that are intentional and to look for ways of putting down stepping stones and markers for others to find their way to Jesus, the living water, who satisfies all our thirst and brings us wells bubbling up to eternal life. In your precious name, we ask all these prayers. Amen. Please stand as we come together to affirm our faith, to say out loud what it is that we believe. As we say these words together, we believe in God the Father who reveals his love to us in Christ. We believe in God the Son who pours out God's Holy Spirit on us. We believe in the Holy Spirit who enables us to worship God in spirit and truth. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. afresh to the living God. Heavenly Father, you give us riches beyond measure. We can only return a fraction of what we owe you. But we ask, Lord, that you will bless our offering and help us to use them wisely in your service and for your glory. And although we won't be uh, shaking hands of people to offer peace unless they're in our households or bubbles. We will be acknowledging that we want the peace of God to rest with others, perhaps as we look around and wave and nod at people. God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We offer one another a sign of God's peace.
now we come around the Lord's table, that we first of all recognize his presence with us as we have these responses that should be on the screen. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty and joy at all times and on all occasions to give you, Lord Jesus, all the glory, all the praise, all the honor. For you have done great things. You bring us life in all its fullness. And you quench our thirst as living water. We thank you that on the night before you died, you gathered your friends around a table and taking the bread that was there, you broke it and gave it to them saying, take, eat, this is my body given for you. After supper, you took the cup and gave God thanks. And you gave it to them saying, drink this, all of you. This is my blood poured out for you and all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Lord, we remember all that Jesus has done for us. How on the cross his body was broken and his blood was poured out so that through him, we may have forgiveness of sin. Through him, the way to heaven was opened. Through him, death was conquered. Sin was defeated. In Jesus, we have the living water that quenches all our thirst. Hallelujah. Amen. Please be seated as we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith and receive from our Lord Jesus Christ and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We remind ourselves of how we come to this, his table. And when we come, you'll be directed by the wardens to come forward and be asked to come down the middle and return down the outside. And uh, you will just receive bread on this occasion. But we remind ourselves of how we come to this table. We come to this table not because we must, but because we may. Not because we are strong, but because we are weak. We come not because our own goodness gives us the right to come, but because we need God's mercy and help. We come because we love the Lord and would like to love him more. We come because he loves us and gave himself for us. We come to meet the risen Christ, for we are his body.
prayer after communion. God, our creator, you feed your children with the true manna, the living bread from heaven. Let this holy food sustain us through our earthly pilgrimage until we come to that place where hunger and thirst are no more. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. There's a prayer after communion beginning, eternal God. Amen. Let's join together in saying this. Eternal God, giver of love and power, your Son, Jesus Christ, has sent us into all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom, confirm us in his mission, and help us to live the good news we proclaim. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There aren't any notices that I can think of, except to say thank you to those who came yesterday to help uh, do that uh, gardening for the Boaz uh, uh, refugees uh, on Irwood Road. We probably all still have the scars to prove that we were there, um, and there's still a pile of greenery to be got rid of, but uh, we're great thanks for all those. Uh, we'll send some pictures out on Facebook for you to see the, the makeover that was attempted in one day. <laughs> but thank you. Our final hymn then, that great hymn of praise about direction and being led by Jesus, who is the way maker, the one for whom we're journeying toward and journeying with. Be thou my image. May God the Father bless all your relationships. May Christ Jesus encourage you as saviour of the world. And may the Holy Spirit empower you 
to make Jesus known to others and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. The final dismissal. Father God, send us out to love you and to receive your love and to share that love with the world. In the name of Christ, amen. amen.